All right, folks, I am holding a red light cap. This is a laser cap that's used for hair growth. And today we're gonna talk about how red light therapy can be used for skin rejuvenation as well as hair growth. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam. I'm a board certified facial plastic surgeon and founder and creator of Karam MD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And on today's episode of Skin School, we're gonna talk about red light therapy. And we're gonna learn the science behind red light therapy. We're gonna learn how it affects cellular function and how it improves rejuvenation. We're gonna talk about what are the considerations that you should take into consideration when looking at a red light device for at home or in the office, as well as we're gonna learn about some of the risks as well as some of the all around benefits of this for a number of different conditions that you may not have been aware of. So you definitely don't wanna miss this episode, watch it all the way through. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, which uh, will allow us to give you more content like this on a weekly basis. All right, folks, so let's dive in. So red light therapy is a category that is simply discussed. It's what we talk about, but what's interesting is there's a red light and then there's an infrared category. Now I'm gonna describe what this is and the differences. Basically the red light, which goes between 620 to 750 on the light spectrum and 750 and beyond is where you have infrared. Now here's the caveat. Infrared you cannot see with your eyes. The red light you can see. What I just showed you here was a red light device. There's also a combo device that brings both of these together. What we're gonna talk about is what are the benefits of each of these and what do they actually do. So this is where the physics starts to come into play a little bit. So we're gonna talk for a moment about skin penetration. We're gonna talk about skin for a moment. So here's the deal. The shorter the wavelength, the shorter the penetration of the light. So when you have red light, you're penetrating basically a shorter distance than infrared. Infrared is longer wavelength. So this is where the difference comes in. If you're only addressing skin, you're gonna use a red light device. If you wanna get the skin plus some of the deeper structures, like say, for example, muscles or tendons or different things like that, you're gonna use an infrared device. Sometimes you're gonna to wanna to bring them both together for basically getting an all-in-one type of an approach. And those are called combo devices. So what is actually happening with these red lights, why are they beneficial? Why are they trending? Well, number one, they do show results. There's a lot of science that's been supporting these over the last five, 10, 15 years. This shows that there's a benefit to the cells. What are those benefits exactly? So when you shine this, this type of uh, wavelength onto cells, the cell will then become excited. And what excited basically translates to is in enhanced function. Honestly, a functional analogy to where like you're giving it a cup of coffee, you're giving it some caffeine or you know some type of stimulant. It's basically getting the cell to wake up and start doing more. And when it comes to skin cells like the fibroblasts, that stimulation that comes from the red light or the infrared light, what it's doing is it's causing the mitochondria, which are the small energy producing organelles inside the cell. I'm taking you back to biology now. We're gonna mix biology and physics, which is you know super fun for me. But what it's doing is it's causing the mitochondria to start producing a lot of energy. The uptick in the energy is then causing the cell to do more. And really what, what you wanna see at the end of this type of therapy is that your, your skin cells are rejuvenating, you're creating more collagen, which then ultimately causes less lines and wrinkles and all around better condition of the skin. Because remember, as I talked about in other videos, skin continues to lose collagen. In fact, our whole body continues to lose collagen from 27 all the way for the rest of our life. So anything we can do to stimulate collagen is a step in the right direction. And I talked about skincare and how all that, you know, the different actives affect the, the fibroblasts in a similar kind of way. Well, red light is doing something in a different way, but with the same end result, which is increased collagen stimulation. So in a nutshell, the increase in production of collagen makes tissue stronger, more elastic, better. So when it comes to the skin, you get less fine lines and wrinkles. When it comes to hair, you get thicker, more dense, healthier hair. 
By decreasing inflammation, you're improving conditions that affect the scalp, for example, that cause hair loss. You're also, by decreasing inflammation to the skin, you're improving the skin's ability to have a better skin barrier, accept products that you put on top of it, all around look less red. So the changes in blood flow that come from red light therapy and infrared light therapy are giving the skin and the hair all around rejuvenative effects and benefits. So why has this become so popular? Well, number one, it works. There's a lot of science behind it. Number two, you get a plethora of celebrities and different people talking about it, it spreads the word. You also see benefits that cross not just rejuvenation, but you also have medical enhancements with it. So for example, it's been used for arthritis, it's been used for tendonitis, it's been used for you know, a variety of different pain issues. In fact, a device like, like this, like the light, st um, light stem device, this is actually um, a device that you can use as a belt. It can go around any part of your body, your back, low back, and it stimulates in the infrared level and, and the red light. This is a combo device. And that also enhances and improves the inflammation and pain that happens in these soft tissues. So because of the variety of different benefits that it has, suddenly it's you know, the talk of the town, everyone's talking about it. But still at the end of the day, you as a consumer need to be able to understand this so that you can put together the right device for your particular needs. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of scientific studies. In fact, there was a large study done in 2020 and was published in the Journal of Drugs and Dermatology, which basically showed that the LED light enhances fibroblast activity, which leads to decrease in fine lines and wrinkles. And what are LED, let's just be clear about that. LED is, are these individual little lights that you see here. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. That is a light emitting diode. That's what that term is. So if you see that term, just know that it's the basically the little light bulbs that are emitting either red light or infrared light. Also, in the same you know, category of, of scientific research, we found that the use of red light therapy and infrared light therapy can be helpful in male pattern hair loss, as well as androgenic alopecia, as well as alopecia areata, which is basically a function of increased scalp blood flow, decreased scalp inflammation, and enhancement of the hair follicle through strengthening and all the other things that we just discussed a moment ago. So those are probably the three biggest uses, skin rejuvenation, hair loss, and more commonly now used on bodies. How do you find the device? How are these devices usually sold and, and used? So here's the interesting thing. Years ago, probably five to 10 years ago, there weren't that many at-home devices. In fact, in our practice, we had these large panels that we would use as the patients would come in and you know spend about 30 minutes underneath these panels, and that was really the main way to be able to get red light therapy. But nowadays, there are so many at-home devices, but there are some caveats to knowing which one to choose and what are the benefits of each of them. So the interesting thing about it is because it's become so much more available, it's become so much more popular. And with that, we're gonna make some good decisions. So what should you be looking for? So not all devices are created equally. So the real story comes down to when you're using a device like this, it's about irradiance and intensity. The irradiance is basically just a measure of power that affects the light's intensity on the you know, portion of the skin. One of the things that you gotta remember is you're trying to get an effect from the light that is hitting the skin or the scalp. If you don't have enough irradiance, the skin's not gonna see any change. You know, it's not gonna get enough light on there to make the changes that will show clinical improvement. So irradiance is a very important number to look at. Now I can't give you ex exact numbers, you know, and ranges to, to be at, but I can just tell you generally speaking, an irradiance of around 110 is a good number to look for. And that's measured as milliwatts per centimeter squared. So around 110 is a pretty good number. Now, the lower the irradiance and intensity, the longer you're gonna have to put the light on your head or your, your face to be able to get the changes you're looking for. So this really improves the efficiency of the device. If you wanna spend 10 to 20 minutes under the device, as opposed to 30 to 45 minutes, get a device that has a stronger irradiance. That's key. 
Number two, total number of LED bulbs. These LED bulbs is what I just showed you a moment ago. These individual bulbs, the more there are, the more efficient the device is. If you only have a handful of them, well, certainly it's not gonna emit as much power and light and certainly not gonna give as much change. So you definitely wanna find a device that has a pretty good density of LED bulbs. Number three, do you get a pure red light device? Do you get a pure infrared light device or do you get a combo device? So as I mentioned before, red light basically penetrates halfway or so into the skin. It's primarily a skin only type of a treatment. Infrared goes through the skin and into the deeper tissues. If you want a skin only device, then red light is sufficient. If you want to help with muscular pain, as well as maybe you know improve the skin as, at the same time, then infrared is a good, good approach. If you just want a single device and not have to think about, about that, then probably a combo device is a good one. And this one, for example, even though it's designed primarily for, for pain and discomfort in musculoskeletal stuff, it has red light as well as infrared. So that's a combo device. And I think that's probably the best way to go because that way you get a single device that you can be used for multiple different scenarios that will help with deep tissue penetration as well as superficial penetration and cover the bases. But that's the reason why you want to look for either red, infrared, or combo. Let that be an important thing because if you're looking to help with aches and pains, for example, getting a, a pure red light device isn't gonna do that for you, right, naturally. And if your goal is to get primarily skin improvement, then a pure infrared device might not be the right approach either. So combo devices are good if you just want a single one or if you wanna get different devices, use them specifically. Make sure the irradiance and intensity is high enough and make sure you have enough bulbs on there to do the job. And if you do those things, generally speaking, of course it depends on the device, so please make sure you read the device's recommendations for how often you should be using them. Like this laser cap that I showed you a moment ago, basically I put it on my, on my head at nights when I'm, you know, say relaxing and watching TV, and this guy stays on my head for about half an hour, three days a week. So every other day, basically, I put this on my head. My wife does it as well. We take it on vacation, etc. This is a relatively older device. Maybe there's better devices out there now. Maybe there's stronger devices. But about 30 minutes, three times a week is sufficient. What happens is when you take it off, you know, when you take it off and you can see the, the light emission right there, when you take this off, the head is gonna feel warm. That's through the increase in blood flow. You wanna make sure that the head or whatever tissue you're putting it on doesn't get too hot. So staying about six to eight inches away from the face is important, wearing safety goggles because you don't wanna look right into this light. Additionally, doing it too frequently is not a good thing either. So stick with the basic recommendations that are given to you through the manufacturer of the particular light. But some things just to keep in mind is goggles for, the, for facial masks, don't let it get too hot. Don't use it longer than you're directed to. Let's now talk about some specific risks or things that you should be aware of. So you do these things, basically you should be in pretty good shape because overall, this is a very safe treatment. Now, there are some conditions, there are some drugs, antibiotics, et cetera, some, some drugs that are, make you more photosensitive, meaning less sensitive to light. So if you are on one of those, don't use this. If you have a seizure disorder and this flashing light is something that can trigger it, certainly don't use light therapy. They say for pregnancy and breastfeeding, like almost everything else, don't use it as well. I'm actually not quite sure why that would be, but again, just play it safe during those periods of time. Don't do anything you know, extra on top of that. Otherwise, generally speaking, as long as you follow the recommended guidelines, you're in pretty good shape. Now, here's the caveat to all of this, and this is the truth behind everything that you do. If you do this once in a while, you're just throwing good money away. It's pointless. Consistency is the key. Consistency means that if you're gonna use a device for hair growth, and again, this is used for men and women. Like I said, my wife uses it regularly, just, and I use it to just help uh, keep what I've got and, and maybe make the hair overall healthier. If you're gonna do it, you've got to commit 
to doing it regularly because these changes that you get with this only happen by compounding over time. And that is exactly the message that I've been sending and sharing with you guys when it comes to skincare as well. If you're gonna be on, whether it's you know, my trifecta or your own you know, combination of, uh, of active skincare, you need to be on it regularly because the changes that are happening again at the cellular level require consistency to make the changes manifest. So when it comes to red light therapy, it's no different. If you're gonna do it, do it regularly and do it, plan on doing it basically for the rest of your life to be able to get the benefit. But here's the other important caveat. It is not a replacement for sun protection or active skincare. You can't get your skin to totally rejuvenate and show all the signs of improvement, etc., by using it. Because there's a lot of other things that are happening to the skin that red light therapy doesn't address but it does help with boosting collagen, which I'm a huge fan of because everything that structurally happens to the skin starts with the loss of collagen over time. So anything you can do, whether it's retinols, vitamin C, niacinamide, microneedling, chemical peels, red light therapy, anything you can do that are stimulating collagen, you're winning the game, but you gotta do it consistently. You gotta do it consistently. If you do that, fine lines and wrinkles and inelasticity and all the things that make the skin look saggy and old will be significantly improved over time, the crepey quality of the skin. All right, folks, that is red light therapy in a nutshell. So I hope that was helpful. I hope it gives you a little bit of a, of a good guiding principle, gives you some understanding of what you're actually doing to your tissues, but also what, uh, what to look for when deciding whether you wanna move down this road. I generally speaking, I give, it a, uh, I give it a thumbs up. Why not do a little extra? But again, this all just depends on your, your motivation and your uh, willingness to commit to this type of treatment. But otherwise, good stuff. I don't have anything you know, too negative to say about it at all. Um, <clears throat> as I said, I use, use these treatments myself. So if you enjoyed this topic, hit thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to this channel. Help us grow. Continue to get in front of as many people as possible. The whole point here is empowerment and give you the knowledge that it takes to be able to make good decisions for yourself in this truly crazy and convoluted maze when it comes to skin rejuvenation, facial rejuvenation, and everything else, you know, cosmetic. So my job is to help you clarify and make good decisions. If you want more content like this, make sure you sign up for the CareMD Journal, which is a newsletter that I personally write and gets to your email every week in topics like this in great depth and great information. And if you haven't already, make sure you share this with some friends and family. Let them uh, have the opportunity to learn about these uh, wonderful topics as well. Folks, until next time, Dr. Amir Karam, look forward to seeing you soon.